Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is the Print Dry Pro Filament Drying System. I've had this for a few months now and I think I generally really like it. Um, what I want to do in this video is kind of give you an overview of what this is, what it does, and then I'm just going to dive straight into the pros and cons. So let's get started. So first off, what is this thing? This is basically just a glorified dehydrator, which dehydrates or removes the moisture from your filament. Any amount of moisture in your filament is going to adversely affect the print quality of your prints coming out of your 3D printer. I had been using a dehydrator, um, just a food dehydrator off of Amazon. I had a link down below. You can check out that previous video and all those details. And it was time to get a dedicated system. There's not really a lot of filament drying solutions out there on the market for the hobbyist use. So this is kind of one of the only games in town. And when I was researching this, I really didn't find that much information. So I'm just gonna simply cover the things that I couldn't really find. And there are a couple little quirks in using this thing that eh, would be nice to know before you go into it. So let me just kind of give you a brief overview of some of the features, and then we'll go into the pros and cons cons. So what you're seeing here is kind of the deluxe model. It comes with this um, upper deck. It's just an expansion that allows it to go from two rolls of filament to four rolls of filament. So as you can see, I've got four rolls inside of there. You can't really fit any more in there because there's these kind of center braces, which hold some desiccant packs and also are what's used to hold the rolls in place. This can also accommodate the larger rolls, which go this way, you know, left and right. So you can kind of, you know, it's pretty flexible. You can accommodate pretty much whatever you want. You also have all of these little access ports on the front. So they are mirrored on the back, and then you also have some on the side. So if you're using a large roll of filament, you go out to the sides because the filament is like that. And then for these smaller standard one kilogram rolls, you're going to go either out the front or the back. They're placed, you know, well enough to be usable. It also has adjustable temperature and a timer so you can time it with your print. So if your print's going to take five hours, you can have this set to five hours and it will turn off at the end of it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basics. Uh, let's dive right into the pros, the things I like about this. What I like about this is it's a better form factor than just using a standard food dehydrator. You can actually print directly from it, which is a really nice plus and basically the whole reason I got it. So my biggest pro with this is it does the thing. It works. It dehydrates your filament. I've used this with PLA and nylon pretty much exclusively and it works. It absolutely makes the print quality of PLA better. Um, I had a previous video where I showed one of my viewers sent in some um, PLA that was trashed and it ended up that it had just absorbed moisture over the years, dried it, printed just fine. Um, I even showed this on my Instagram where I had some nylon, nylon G, nylon G directly from Matter Hackers sealed with the desiccant pack, printed it one hour out of opening the bag and had one print quality. And then after drying it overnight, it was significantly better, a lot less stringing. That's what a filament dehydrator does. This is nothing really different than what a standard dehydrator does, but it still operates and functions the way that you would expect. So that is a nice plus. The other thing is that you can print directly from it because it has all these ports. It comes with these um, like Bowden tube type things. It's just, you know, the tube with this little um, silicone plug. So you can just kind of push that in any of them, run the filament out, run this directly to your printer, and you are good to go. And because you have the flexibility of all these different holes, eh, you can pretty much make it work for whatever setup you have, which is nice. And because it holds either two or four rolls, or I guess you could just maybe keep stacking this up, that is also a nice feature as well. So overall, I think my biggest uh, sum up for the pros is that it does the thing. The cons are a little bit interesting because it doesn't always work the way you want it to, but overall I like the timer. I like the adjustable temperature rather than the rotary knob. I like the form factor of it versus, you know, the stackable dehydrators like the food dehydrators because it's really hard to get multiple filament spools in there. So overall, I just really like the design of this and the way it functions when it's all set up and working. So now let's talk about the cons and these are relatively soft. Um, it is not the quietest thing in the world. 
That's what it sounds like when it's heating up. And you know, it's relatively loud. If you have this in a workshop environment, eh, it's gonna be fine. But if you have this like, you know, in your office or, you know, inside your room or whatever, it's loud, it, it's noticeable. I have this in my closet in my office and with the doors closed, eh, I can hear it, but it's not that loud. But if it is out in the open, you're gonna notice it and it's gonna be distracting. So much so that I'm gonna turn it off for this video. Um, actually, I'm gonna plug it back in. The other thing that I really don't like is the interface. The interface could be a lot better. And I realize that they probably just took an off the shelf dehydrator and it modified a little bit. But the thing that I don't like is when you power it back on, it obviously comes up to the last temperature, which is fine. So you adjust your temperature, that's nice and easy. If you double press both of these, you can adjust the amount of time left. The weird thing is you can't really turn off this timer. You can only go back down to zero. So if you go to zero, it just stays on indefinitely. Cool. Well, the problem is, let's say I set this to one hour. Okay, 79. Oops, both of them. Set this to one hour. If I set this to one hour, it will turn off after one hour. The problem is, is as soon as I turn this back on, it's gonna be reset to that one hour timer. I'm sure there is some reasoning behind this, but I've had a couple issues using this where I turned it back on thinking I was just turning it on and it was set to you know one or two hours or whatever it was previously and then it turned off. So I don't really like that it's remembering what the timer was set to because when you just first turn this thing on, it just turns on to the temperature and you kind of forget that the timer is there. So the timer is a little bit annoying. You just have to remember to check it every time. The other thing that I don't really like about this is they've theoretically custom made this. If you look at the top, it has like print dry on it and everything like it, it, it's custom made enough. They're probably contracting someone to make it, but there is nothing on here to tell the temperatures. As you see, I printed out from the manual and taped it on the top what the temperatures are, but there's nothing on here to indicate it. It'd be really cool if you could cycle through like PLA, PETG, ABS, nylon, things like that. That would be nice, but you just kind of have to remember what those temperatures are or refer to the manual or do what I did is print it out and put it on the top lid. It also goes from 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, which are pretty big jumps. And 75, 65, and 55 are the only ones that you ever use for drying filament. So you have PLA at 55, your ABSs and um, other things like that at the 50, 65, and then your nylons and um, there's another one at 75. I'd have to look at the thing on top. So you're really only using three settings, but then it has these two other ones. So you can kind of tell that it's not exactly purpose built for this. I think from here up is purpose built, but I think down below they're just repurposing something and putting their label on it. Um, let's talk about this next. So here's a top-down look down, well, into the top of it, and you can see you've got the um, filament spools, and they're held in place um, by these little rods. So to put a spool of filament in, you kind of just go through, and then you kind of set it down in there. And you can see that I've kind of had a little bit of practice with this. If you just pull this spool out, it does that and it just kind of falls down inside. And if you're lucky, it just falls down to the second level. If you're unlucky, it'll go all the way to the bottom and then you literally got to take this whole stack apart to retrieve this little thing. I don't really know of a better way to do this. This is kind of a simple, clever solution, I guess. But if you have this in a closet like I do, it's actually really cumbersome to swap out filament. And especially swapping out on the bottom level, you've got to take this whole thing off and then replace them on the bottom. It doesn't really seem like that big of a deal. And I know someone's you know, getting ready to type in the comments, but if you have all the Bowden tubes plugged into the back and these are all running over to your printers, you've got to fully remove this thing and then all the tubes are in the way. It's it's a little cumbersome. I don't really know of a better way to do it, but it's, it can be an absolute pain in the ass to swap out filament. So if we take these out, 
I'll kind of show you the design here. So you get two of these, and then in the center, you just kind of have this little bridge that you just load up with desiccant packs just to keep it nice and dry inside of here. So with the big spools, they kind of go this way, like I was mentioning previously. So I don't know, it's kind of interesting. The other thing about this whole method is that you could theoretically stack three spools lengthwise, and I might even make a new attachment that just goes the whole length of it because swapping out the filament spools is just such a pain anyway. So yeah, maybe you'll just get three in there instead. But it is a little bit of a trick and these little notches, it doesn't always find the notch. So I don't know, maybe I'm just being a little bit too picky, but having used this for the last three months doing a ton of prints, it is a bit of a pain to swap these out. And it's kind of two levels. Like you see, this is one level and then this is a whole nother level. And you can see that there's the uh, tubes or the holes for the tubes on each level. So what I have is I have these kind of running out the bottom and then out the back. So I usually have them running out this level. And so that means when you pull this out, the filament is then connected into this tube. So it's just a bit of a clunky design and it makes this whole thing really annoying when you want to change out filament. I guess that's just the end result is changing out filament is a pain. When everything is loaded up and everything is, you know, through its little Bowden tubes, you got no issue whatsoever. But if you want to swap something out, eh, you're going to drop one of these down in the bottom and then you're going to have to fish down around it. And by the way, these get really, really hot at the max temperature, which you use for nylon. These are about 150 degrees Fahrenheit it's kind of too hot to touch at times. So I don't really know why that had to be metal on the outside. Maybe it's just to like heat it from the inside. I don't know, but yeah, uh, it's just kind of a bit of a gripe and I'm complaining about that. So the last gripe I have is the included accessories and this comes with it. This is like a sealed dry box that you're supposed to use with your filament and Let's just talk about this. The base price of the unit is $190, and with the additional chamber, it is $220. I'm going to say that I think the price is perfectly reasonable. I think it's worth it, and I've got no issues with the price whatsoever. However, it comes with some needless stuff that they could take out to shave down the price of this thing. It comes with one of these. This is a container that you're supposed to use, I guess, to dry your filament, put it inside. It has this nice little weather sealing on it or whatever. And then you're supposed to put it inside here and then you can store it. I mean, that's fantastic, but it's one box. If you're like me, you have dozens of rolls of filament and you're probably going to dry your filament before you do a critical print or you're gonna print directly from the unit. I don't know why I would dry filament, take this out and then print from a bare spool. I'm going to just put this inside the unit and print directly from it. That's what it's made for. So the fact that it comes with one of these little containers is, I don't know, I just think it's kind of silly. If you could save me $5 by not having this, I, I'm never using, I'm just storing this other crap in here. So I think this is kind of silly you're not gonna have one of these for every roll of filament. It's impractical and quite frankly, a waste of plastic. This is just a lot of plastic to waste on it. Secondly, the filament spools are actually supposed to be held in place with these little things, which are really, really nice, but they don't fit any filament spools that I actually have. The hole is way too big or the diameter of this is way too big. They're supposed to fit on here like that and then your filament goes on these, and then that rolls around. It's just unnecessary. There's no reason for this. The filament spool itself is perfectly fine on just this metal peg thing, and it comes with a bunch of these, which are really nice rubber, and it's really well made, but it's just extra plastic that's not necessary, and it doesn't fit any spool. Like, look at the size difference on this. It just isn't really made for filament spools seemingly. So all of these accessories right here is just something that doesn't need to come with and it's just added cost. So I just think it's a waste of money. So I know I spent the majority of this video talking about all the things I hate about this, but 
in the end, overall, I really like this thing. So if you're just skipping to the end of the video to view the conclusion, I really like this. I think it's worth it. I think you should buy it. I think everyone should have some sort of filament drying solution. If you're only printing PLA, maybe not. I still think PLA can benefit from being dried. Most of the issues I see in 3D printing forums are just bad filament. It just needs to be dried and reconditioned, and that's what something like this will do for you. If you're printing PETG, TPU, ABS, or nylons, which most people are, you need to have a filament drying solution. It's much better than using an oven, and I think this is much better than using a um, standard food dehydrator. So I think it's worth the cost. I think everything is good about it. It's just a little fiddly and a little cumbersome, and I'm really curious to see what the third version of this is going to end up being, but I really enjoy it. I really like it, and that was the impetus for making this video is I do like it. So that is my final thoughts on the Print Dry Pro. Uh, if you have any questions, post them down below. Uh, check out my Facebook page for any updates updates to my channel. Check out my Instagram for any updates on whatever I'm working on, and I do have links down below for this and um, the other videos I've done on print drying. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.